Nigeria's Vice President Kashim Shetima hosted a closed-door business roundtable with multinational companies in Davos, Switzerland at the World Economic Forum. The VP was joined by Aisha Rimi, CEO of the Nigeria Investment Promotion Council, Hanatu Musawa, Minister of Art, Culture and Creative Economy, Dr. Bosun Tijani, ICT Digital Economy Minister, Wale Edun, Minister of Finance and Coordinated Minister of the Economy, and Heineken Lopobiri, Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Oil. Still in Davos, the noticeably smaller Nigerian delegation hosted a Nigerian night, a showcase for the World Economic Forum. It featured a display of Nigerian food, culture, a pitch to foreign investors, and a viral moment when the Vice President Shetima was joined by his ministers for a dance rendition of Buga by Nigerian artist Kiz Daniel. <laughs> So good to see that aside business, uh, ministers also have excellent dance skills. Joining us on the show this morning to update us on what's on the agenda today at the World Economic Forum in Davos are Dr. Ruben Abati, Rolake Akinkugbe Filani and Rotus Odiri. Good morning. Welcome to the morning show. Good morning, Dr. Abati, Rolake and Rotus. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good morning, good, good morning, morning, good morning, good morning. Excellent. Morning. I think before the end of today's show, you have to show us your buga. Well, let's go straight to the <laughs> questions this morning. Rotis, you made some observations on the business roundtable on Nigeria's population, foreign exchange, and energy transition. What can you share with us further? Yeah, just real quick, um, and good morning to you all, and good morning to all our viewers. Um, the population of Nigeria kept coming up over and over again. Uh, Vice President Shetima said we have a big population, a big population, a big population. It is going to attract business. That's all well and good. However, of that population, how many of them have the spending power to make it attractive for a business to come in? We had um, a report from STAIRS, which is an economic think tank, that said 60% of Africans spend less than $2 a day. For Nigeria, 40% of the population is poor. 60% of the population is multidimensionally poor. So I think that has to be put into context. But the population is large, it's attractive, but of that population, how many of them have that spending power? You've seen the inflation numbers, right? You've seen what's happening with the currency. We're now at 1,300 to the dollar on the parallel market. That's population. On the foreign exchange, Wale Edun said that there is an executive order which is supposed to entice Nigerians overseas in the diaspora and even Nigerians at home to bring their dollars out of their DOM accounts and in bring them back into Nigeria. The thing is, um, banks already do this, right? They already have securities, dollar securities that, are, that pay interest. The um, Dr. Adedutan of First Bank was part of that business forum yesterday. First Bank, FBN Quest has a um, US dollar account that pays about 5%. So if you invested 100,000 in it, you'd get about $5,000 back. Standard Bank was there yesterday as well, a representative from there. They have a money market fund that did 9.8% last year, US dollar money market fund. So if you invested $100,000, you get 9,800. So when Wale Edun says there'll be an executive order to entice people to invest in US dollar securities in Nigeria, is it through the banks or is it going to be through the government? Is it going to be at a higher interest rate than what is already being done? So needed a little more color. And then finally, um, Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, Heineken Lopobore, whom hopefully we'll be talking to later on today, only spoke about the energy transition. He didn't talk about how on Arise News, he said earlier that he wants to get us to 2 million barrels per day in production. The budget is saying 1.78 million. We did 1.4 million in the third quarter of this last year. We did 1.2 million in the second quarter of last year. We haven't even met our OPEC quota of 1.5 million. So those are my observations. 
And thank you for those insights, uh, Rotus. Uh, Rolake, you also spoke to the CEO of the Ministry of Finance, Incorporated. What were the highlights and your key takeaways from the Nigeria Investment Roundtable with key ministers yesterday? Yeah, thank you very much. Good morning, Vimbai. Great to be on again on The Morning Show. Well, I spoke to Dr. Armstrong Takang, who is the CEO of the Ministry of Finance, Incorporated, the new Minister of Finance, Incorporated. MOFI, as it's called, has a mandate to steward and manage FGN interests in state assets across multiple sectors. Dr. Armstrong made the point of clarifying that the idea behind this move is not for government to operate the assets, but in his words, to optimize the assets. I then probed him further on what he meant by optimize. He mentioned two or three critical things. The first one is really to realize capital appreciation of, on FGN shares in those assets, and also to, op to optimize them in such a way that it would provide liquidity to the government, obviously through the remittance and payback of dividends to government. He also mentioned the importance of having a national asset register. And we've been talking about this for quite a long time. And hopefully that's something that will materialize in the short term. But very interestingly, and one I think perhaps the finance minister should look further into, is leveraging the assets to raise investments on international markets or local markets. So this could either come in the form of collateralizing government shares in those assets to further our own capital sourcing goals, or, or literally using them as a showcase to attract foreign direct investment. I think this was a really important conversation because we're talking about rebuilding trust. As you know, without access to data and information on what the government owns, we always talk about what government owes, but not many people actually know what government owns. I think pushing for that agenda and creating that national asset register that's even available publicly, I would add, will actually go a long way to rebuilding trust, rebuilding public trust, increasing accountability and, and efficiently and transparently stewarding public assets. So I thought it was a very important conversation to have and hopefully we'll see that. You will have also seen recent news reports that the government had transferred the mandate for management of the FGN's holdings in the 11 discos away from BPE to MOFI. And Dr. Armstrong did also mention that that would lead to further reforms and efficiency in the sector. Well, time will tell what exactly those details will be. As you know, the devil will be in the detail. But yes, great conversation with MOFI. If we then segue back to the finance minister, I think Rotus has said a lot, but the one key thing the minister, Wally Edwin, did mention was the fact that he wanted to leverage on domestic dollar savings. And I think Rotus has mentioned a bit about that, but he made a point of saying that the banks, Nigerian banks, have extensive dollar liquidity and the banks would need to come to the table to work with the government to see how they could help plug this five billion backlog, either on a spot basis, on a forwards basis. So I think that's something that it would be great to follow up on. But he seemed to say that part, a large part of the solution is actually domestic to our FX liquidity challenges. And I thought that was an interesting perspective. All right. Thank you so much for that, Rolake. Okay. Uh, Dr. Abati, your submission on uh, what Nigeria displayed yesterday and, and what we understand. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's good to be back on the program again uh, this, this morning. Yeah. I'd like to just talk about uh, what I observed about Nigeria's uh, participation uh, yesterday, and uh, which I think may be of interest to our viewers, particularly at home. I mean, the day started with the uh, vice president, you know, taking part in a session uh, titled Restoring Faith in the Global System which was uh, a conversation about multilateralism, the importance of multilateralism, you know, in a fractured world to drive cooperation, partnerships and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, cooperation. And it's important that Nigeria is at the table where these very serious conversations are taking place about the state of the world and also about what can be done to shape the future. Uh, not just, uh, you know, on national scale, but also on a global multinational uh, uh, scale. So I think that that's one uh, major thing here, that uh, Nigeria is at the table. And we have the ministers also participating in many of the, uh, of the uh, forums. Now, the second thing yesterday that I also noticed was that in the afternoon, uh, towards evening, 
uh, Nigeria had what they called, you know, the Nigerian Business Forum, uh, which was chaired by the Vice President, uh, Senator Kashim Shatima. And the purpose of that uh, roundtable basically was to sell Nigeria to the world. The contest was to sell Nigeria to uh, the private sector, international investors. And in the room yesterday, we had representatives of many, you know, uh, companies, including even a representative of uh, Manchester United, Evram uh, Glacier. Uh, we, we even had uh, a representative of Bayern Leverkusen, who was talking about uh, Victor uh, Boniface in the course of it. We had the chairman of Indorama. And then, of course, we have Airtel in the room. We had Coca-Cola in the room. We had, uh, you know, other investors in the room. Standard Chartered Bank was also in the room. And and then, of course, you had Nigerian players. Uh, Oando uh, was there, uh, Wale Tinumbu. Um, uh, Azan Odukale, uh, Oye Azan Odukale uh, of Leadway Assurance was there. And the CEO of First Bank was also there. So it was a very robust conversation about prospects for investment in Nigeria. With the uh, uh, vice president summarizing this by saying, welcome to Nigeria. Come to Nigeria, invest in Nigeria. And if I can quote him, uh, you know, verbatim, he said, Nigeria is a sleeping giant that has risen and that Nigeria is a place to go because it has a president that believes in investment and that has put a team together that can, you know, deliver. But of course, questions were raised about the Forex regime in Nigeria, about industrial policy, about macroeconomic indicators uh, in Nigeria, which the ministers who were in the room, the Minister of State Oil and Gas, as uh, Rotus has pointed out, the Minister of uh, uh, Culture and uh, 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 Creative Economy, uh, the Minister uh, also in charge of uh, of uh, uh, trade and investment, who was represented by Aisha Rimi, uh, who is in charge of uh, NIPC. And there were also, you know, other government officials uh, in the room who interacted uh, with the uh, investors who were there. And then later in the evening, we had what was called the Nigerian Night uh, in front of the uh, plenary hall uh, in the foyer there, uh, where Nigeria was showcased. Now, this was an evening when you know, there were other events there and we had, you know, almost everybody having a taste of Nigerian cuisine, Nigerian music, Nigerian culture and the arts. And the vice president again led this event, uh, you know, organized by the Ministry of Arts and Culture and Creative uh, Economy. And the high point, which I see many Nigerians have been reacting to, was uh, the vice president, uh, you know, the Minister of Arts and Culture, Minister of State Oil and Gas, are uh, taking to the uh, dance floor uh, to dance to the tune of uh, Bugalololo uh, by Kiss Daniel and uh, Techno. And that was a high point, other people joining and to see, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, people in attendance enjoying Nigerian food and uh, appreciating Nigerian culture. I see that some people have reacted on social media to this, saying, uh, uh, is Nigeria here to dance? Well, the thing to note is that this conference is not just about economics. Yeah. It's also about politics. It's about culture. It's about humanity. It's about identity. And that was why the first day we were reporting, we talked about the Crystal Awards which is given every year when you have the World Economic Forum. And the Crystal Awards is given to cultural figures. This year, Francis Kerry, an architect from Burkina Faso, Michelle Yeoh, the Asian-American Oscar-winning actress, and also Nile Rogers, the pianist, the music, yeah, the, the musician, you know, who is, uh, you know, an iconic uh, pianist. So you had, you know, culture as part of it, people who define, uh, you know, our lives, our culture, the way we live, and provide a balance beyond the economies uh, to focus on our humanity. So I disagree with those people who have been saying, oh, why are they dancing in, uh, in, uh, in uh, you know, uh, Davos? It was a good opportunity, in my view, to showcase Nigerian culture and to promote creative economy as an important area for investment uh, in Nigeria. Well, so far, so good. Uh, Beyond all of that, of course, were the other highlights of yesterday. Antonio Guterres uh, insisting uh, that there must be a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza and okay. also raising questions okay. about artificial intelligence and the risks involved and the need for regulation and also okay. uh, uh, raising questions about okay. the commitment of uh, multinationals to you know, uh, 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 fossil fuel 
you know, reduction and investment in climate adaptation and finance. And then, of course, we had uh, Javier Millet, uh, the president of Argentina, uh, talking about free uh, uh, enterprise capitalism as uh, the solution uh, to poverty rather than uh, socialism. And then, of course, uh, there were other conversations again about the future of humanity. Today, uh, uh, Ezok, the president of Israel, is also going to have a special address. So interesting conversations around here in Davos. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Bati, and just taking us through not just the business side of Davos, but also the cultural side of Davos and just highlighting the importance of attracting investors to Nigeria and promising them a good time while at it. So thank you so much, Dr. Bati, Rolake, and of course, Rotis.